Thanks, Chance. Good morning. It's 7 o'clock. North Vancouver RCMP are searching for a man responsible for a brutal attack on an elderly woman in her own home. He entered the victim's house in the Lower Ridgeway area early yesterday before sexually assaulting her. The woman, who is in her 80s, was taken to hospital. She's now with family and being supported by RCMP Victim Services. Police aren't sure how the man got in, but they are reminding everyone to keep doors and windows secure as the weather gets warmer. A Burnaby cyclist is recovering in hospital from a very unexpected gunshot wound as police continue to search for the person who pulled the trigger. These riders finished the Cash Creek 600 last night. It's a weekend event that starts and finishes in Pitt Meadows. Craig Premack was not at the finish line. The 59-year-old seen here during a prior event was shot in the arm yesterday on Highway 1 near Spence's Bridge. The incident has confused and shaken members of his cycling group. He was actually extremely lucky because he was down in his aero bars and he got hit in the in the arm and I mean he was within you know a, a few inches of his head or his chest and so um, this actually came up in some ways it was quite lucky. RCMP believe Premac shooting was completely random. They're looking for a suspect who drives a pickup truck who was hiding in the bushes off of the highway. More than a dozen horses are believed to be dead after a fire in Langley. It started yesterday afternoon in a barn at a mushroom farm on 224th Street. It took more than 40 firefighters to bring the flames under control. Two farm workers were exposed to smoke but were not seriously injured. The cause of the fire is still unclear, but hay and construction materials helped the wooden structure go up quickly. The trial of an accused serial killer from northern B.C. is set to begin in Prince George today. Cody Lejabakov has been charged with four counts of first-degree murder in the deaths of three women and a teenaged girl. He is accused of killing 15-year-old Lauren Leslie four years ago, 35-year-old Jill Stuchenko in October of 2009, 35-year-old Cynthia Mays in September of 2010, and 23-year-old Natasha Montgomery, who was also reported missing that month. Her body has never been found. Today marks week two of rotating strikes by BC's public school teachers, and that means 150,000 students will be out of class for one day every day this week. Greg Harper joins us live from Richmond with more on this. One of the 12 districts not in session today, Greg. That's right. Good morning, Jody. Uh, just outside Canby Secondary here in Richmond this morning, which will be behind a picket line. Uh, we're seeing a number of teachers arrive, as you can see uh, behind me. And this might be one of the larger picket lines that we've seen since uh, rota rotating strikes began last week. Uh, I've noticed uh, some IKEA workers who are part of the Teamsters Union. They've been locked out for uh, over a year now. They're joining the picket line in support of teachers. Here's a list of the school districts that are impacted by today's job action. Richmond, Delta, Langley and Maple Ridge are among those in the lower mainland. Lower mainland. Unfortunately, there was no bargaining that took place Thursday and Friday of last week. That's because uh, the BCTF and the government were at the Labor Relations Board, arguing over lockout provisions, including a 10% pay pay cut uh, for teachers. A ruling from the Labor Relations Board is expected by Wednesday of this week. Moments ago, Education Minister Peter Fassbender was uh, in our studio, admitting that both sides aren't close at reaching an agreement. I think parents want us to stop the blame game. Well, you said, they said, let's get at the table. Let's keep the kids in school. We're coming to the end of the year. It's graduation time, huge important time for most young people that are graduating. So let's get at the table and let's find a deal. BCTF President Jim Eicher will be here around uh, 7.30 this morning and we'll get his reaction to some of what uh, Peter Fassbender had to say moments ago in our studio. For a list of uh, school districts that will be impacted uh, throughout this week as job action continues uh, tomorrow, uh, Thursday and Friday as well, you can find that list at news1130.com. Jody? Certainly parents are very interested in that list and what both sides have to say this morning. Thanks so much. Greg Harper reporting live for us from Richmond. Sprinkler restrictions have now come into effect across Metro Vancouver and they will stick around until September 30th. The goal is to conserve the demand for water, which is typically highest in the evening when most people wash dishes, do laundry, take showers. Homeowners with even numbered addresses will be allowed to have lawns watered between 4 a.m. and 9 a.m. 
Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. People living at odd numbered addresses are allowed to water during the same times, but on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays.